Okay, in this uh, question we're going to look at a, a steel rod shown here uh, fully restrained between two walls and in this case uh, the load on the rod is uh, zero at 20 degrees Celsius and what we want to do is to compute the stress on the rod when the temperature drops uh, to minus 20 degrees Celsius or a change of minus 40 degrees Celsius and, and the two supports remaining rigid. Before we do that we're going to look at it in a little bit more pedantic way. We're going to also consider what it would do if it was fully unrestrained as a bit of a review then look at it fully restrained but rather than just plug in our equation that we've learned we're going to look at the fundamentals of how that equation was derived using the same method that we used in class to derive that equation because we think that's going to help us set up for understanding what we need to do for part b. So in part b we're going to compute the stress in the rod when the temperature drops minus 20 degrees Celsius but in this instance rather than having fully rigid supports one of the supports is going to shift with the load up 0.5 millimeters in, in the same direction as the temperature change. So to set up part a then uh, I have free body diagram set up here labeled unrestrained and I'm just going to note my support here. We know that there aren't going to be any loads that are actually developed within that so I'll just show it as holding it so it doesn't go floating off into space and then what I want to do is I want to label my displacement at this end as delta T or my th displacement due to thermal. Now for the fully unrestrained section we know that delta T is equal to alpha delta T L and in this case we can go ahead and fill in those uh, components so we have alpha which is 11.7 times 10 to the negative 6 that's per degree Celsius multiplied by our change in temperature so from plus 20 to minus 20 is a negative 40 degrees Celsius change and that's all multiplied by the length which is 2,500 millimeters and gives us a displacement change of negative 1.17 millimeters and the negative of course indicates that that is shortening. And this really sets us up to understand what we're doing uh, in part A from a first principles perspective. So I'm just going to mark that in here 1.17 millimeters as my displacement for the fully unrestrained situation.